Ooh, I think uh, the idea that I just, uh, or the, the, the notion that I focused on in my part of the presentation um, was this notion of relationships, of fostering relationships. I, I think uh, I, I sketched it out uh, at a really high level, and I guess um, what I want folks to basically take away from it is the difference between how we spoke about the audiences of the classical news industry and how we speak about the communities that we foster in the emerging news industry. That uh, there is this sort of sharp distinction that I see, uh, a difference between talking about pumping out stories and talking about uh, fostering crowds, fostering communities, bringing people along, involving them in our reporting and stoking engagement, stimulating uh, really a, a much stronger degree of public participation in journalism than we've ever seen. I think uh, one of the most, one of the things I loved about Dan Gilmore's presentation this morning um, is his notion that the demand side of the journalism equation is incredibly important. And we as media producers, as purveyors of media, have this really fundamental responsibility uh, to be pulling people along with us towards engagement with the information that we're presenting and that they have a role in shaping as well. So the, my focus on relationships is what kind of drives this emphasis that I've had for, for some time now on context. Um, I am, for a long time it's been a problem where that we encounter the news in this sort of time-bound way when we only ever hear the latest thing that happened. Uh, and if you don't have the basic background or understanding that you need to understand, to, to figure out how that latest event in the news fits into the broader picture of how a story has been unfolding, uh, you just ignore it, you tune it out. Uh, I had had this experience for years of following the news and feeling like, of trying to follow the news and feeling like I needed a decoder ring to understand what was going on. Uh, what, what are the basics of immigration reform? It's this headline that happens in, in the news every day and we hear about politicians' positions on it, but uh, what are the fundamental legislative ideas that are being bandied about? Uh, where are the various camps that people fall in? That type of bigger picture information is really difficult to find. When we were coming from time-bound media, uh, like a newspaper, where you have limited space and news, really news, what's new, has to be the focus of the experience, uh, it, it's m more difficult to bring people along, to tell them regularly, this is what you need to know in order to understand this. Uh, but in a medium like the web, we have this tremendous opportunity, almost for the first time, to deliver timeless information along with timely information. To deliver a under, an understanding of news stories that's not bounded by a particular article, uh, but enables you to, to follow a topic generally over time. Uh, I think, so part of what I've been exploring and part of what has really animated my, uh, my recent uh, work on the web has been this question of how do we build websites that are structured this way, where the latest news fits into a broader picture context of here's what you need to know to understand the latest news. Um, well, I'll, I'll start by saying one of the places where it's practically taking, taking shape on the web today. Um, Wikipedia has always been this really interesting thing to me. Uh, Wikipedia is a website where we know from the past few years of break, big breaking news stories, we know that people go to Wikipedia in a breaking news situation because it's a really good source for pulling together the torrent of information that's developing on a, a breaking story at once. Uh, when a student uh, started shooting his fellow students at Virginia Tech a few years ago, uh, uh, Wikipedia was one of the places that folks on campus and outside of campus were going to understand, okay, what all's happened here? While news organizations were posting the latest details of what they were learning, Wikipedia was drawing it all together. I thought in a breaking news context that was fascinating. But we also know that Wikipedia is what Google uh, prioritizes for news stories over time that if you search for a subject like health healthcare reform or immigration or what have you, um, after 
long after the headlines on the topic have faded, Wikipedia is the place that Google prioritizes, that Google reads our intent, or, or our desires wanting to, uh, to, to deliver. Um, so there's a lot that we can learn from an existing structure like that, this website that sort of constantly builds on itself, that works for both breaking news and news over time. Um, and uh, how this shakes out practically in, and how those questions shake out practically in, in a project like Argo, um, I think uh, comes from a few places. I think we're inspired by, as we design parts of our sites that are uh, that are intended to orient users, things like topic pages. How can we incorporate users' need for systematic, explanatory content alongside timely recent content? Um, in our blogging model, in the way the reporter is actually developing the story, how can we devise content plans that uh, both develop and refer back to, promote uh, explanatory content, uh, introductory overview content, systemic information, uh, as well as advancing the latest developments on a story.